Hey friends, and welcome back to another video in this series on how I plan my hikes. So last time we took a look at the weather and talked about some of those logistics for this trip. And the time before that, we actually planned the route and decided we would do about two and a half to three days on the foothills and palmetto trails. This time we are packing for the trip and the weather is still looking about the same uh, definitely a chance of rain, some clouds, um, but overall still summer temperatures. I am going to be bringing like a wool base layer in case it does get a little bit chilly, but overall summer attire for this trip. Now, I'm not going to do an in-depth gear review for every piece of gear I'm taking on this trip, but I will go ahead and give a brief description and just kind of highlight those pieces I feel are pretty important to take along this time. But just to set those expectations, definitely not gonna go into all the technical specs of every single thing that's going in the pack. And then we'll also take a look at the meals for this trip. So let's go ahead and take a look at those important pieces of gear. First up is a rain jacket. So I've said a couple times we're expecting some rain on this trip, so having this is gonna be pretty important. It's nothing too special, just a Columbia jacket. It keeps me dry, it does the job, and I'm probably gonna put this in the front pocket of my pack just so it's easily accessible when we do encounter a rain shower. Next up is our tent. This is the Big Agnes Copper Spur. It's in the Lanshan one-person tent bag. I really did not like the bag that the copper spur came in. You can't compress it down like this one. So I just kind of swapped the tent body and fly out and put it in this bag that I prefer. And then our tent poles. Because I'm going with a friend, we're going to need a two person tent and we're going to kind of split the weight on this one. So I'll carry the tent body and fly and she'll carry the stakes and the poles. Next up is my sleeping bag. I usually carry a 30 degree bag, the Bishop Pass by Mountain Hardware, but that's definitely not gonna be necessary this time. So instead I'm going with the Aegis Max down sleeping bag. It's a pound and a couple ounces, so definitely a lightweight option. And you can see it compresses down to smaller than the tent. This bag is not gonna keep you warm anything below 45 degrees. And so we are going to have summer temperatures during the day, but there's a chance it might get chilly at night, like in the 60s or 50s. So this is going to be a good lighter weight sleeping bag that'll still keep me warm if it does get a little bit chilly. Now let's talk about my bear bag line kit. One of the campsites we're going to stay at is going to have bear cables, but the other one will not. So we'll need to throw a line to store our food at night. Like most of my gear, this is just kind of a hodgepodge of things. It's an old um, tent stake bag from Nature Hike, so it's decently durable for when I want to put a rock in there and throw it. It's not going to tear easily. And just some paracord inside. I've got just 35 to 40 feet of line and two carabiners to obviously hang the food and then tie it off to a tree. So nothing, nothing special once again, just kind of what works for me. We can't forget our paper map. This is the map that we plotted our route on two videos ago. So again, we're using the Blue Wall Map by Pisgah Map Company. And then just a printed copy of our itinerary and a pencil to make some notes. Lastly, you may have heard of the hack of lining your pack with a contractor bag. So these are pretty heavy duty, just plastic bags, much more um, durable than your typical kitchen trash bag. And I put this bigger one in the main compartment of my pack and then this smaller one in the sleeping bag compartment. So instead of using a pack cover, I just line my pack with these and it keeps my gear dry. So once again, because we're expecting those rain showers, this is going to be an important thing to remember uh, to keep my gear, especially the down sleeping bag, uh, dry on this trip. So 
Something I forgot to mention earlier were the trekking poles. These are the Black Diamond Trail Explorer 2 and I recently had to replace my trekking poles because Nora, who's both the sunshine of my life and bane of my existence, decided to eat them. So I decided to upgrade to these Black Diamond trekking poles and so far I'm really pleased with them. They are much lighter than what I was using previously. And while trekking poles aren't 100% necessary on this hike, they'll be pretty handy because we will be going up and down some steep sections when we come off the Foothills Trail into Table Rock, as well as on the Round Top Mountain Passage of the Palmetto Trail. There's going to be some steep upward climbs, and so these will definitely help out. Also, the tent we're taking, the Copper Spur, has a porch mode feature where you can use your trekking poles to extend that vestibule out into a porch. So we may try that out, we may not, but we've got the poles just in case we do want to try that feature. Last thing we're going to talk about today before wrapping up are meals. For this trip, we're going to need two dinners, two breakfasts, and one lunch. We're going to be getting to the trailhead a little after lunchtime our first day, so we'll probably pack lunches or pick something up. And for our third day, we're also hoping to get off trail a little bit after noon. So we'll get lunch out then too. So first night, we're going to try these Peak Refuel freeze-dried meals. It says two servings, but let's be real. Um, just a small half package serving is not going to cut it. So we'll probably each eat one packet each. And second night, dinner will be Kathmandu curry and three cheese mac and cheese. And uh, we can, you know, share them or one person takes one and another person takes the other. And then breakfast, super simple, just instant milk and Cheerios the first morning and then granola for the second morning. As for our lunch, we're going to do peanut butter and jelly, which I'm going to pack in Ziploc bags a little bit closer to the day of the trip. And then, of course, we've got all kinds of bars and snacks uh, for in-between meals. We are going to pack one extra meal just in case because there's always a chance we may be still on the trail around lunchtime our third day and getting hungry, so we'll have something to eat. Or if we find that we're hungry after dinner one night still, we'll have extra food just in case. So this is our um, menu for the trip. Now, I don't count calories. I know a lot of backpacking blogs and channels emphasize and stress the importance of making sure you're tracking like the calories per ounce in every um, bit of food that you take with you, but that just, that doesn't work for me. I've just kind of figured out by experience and about how many miles in a day, just how hungry I'll be after whether it's a whole day of hiking or a half day. And I do go by one pound per person per day, just as like a general guideline, but sometimes it's over, sometimes it's under. I've just, like I said, learned from my own experience, um, how much food I'm going to need and how hungry I'll be. And same thing for my friend, we've backpacked together before and that system works pretty well for both of us. All right, we are pretty much packed. The only thing left to do is actually hit the trail. My pack weighed in at about 23 pounds. Obviously, the length of a trip is going to change that. So a week long trip on the Foothills Trail is going to be way heavier than just a weekend at the state park. I really don't keep track of things like base weight. I just pack the bag and then weigh it at the end. And if I think that the weight is a little unreasonable for the length of stay I'm going to be out on the trail, then I will go through the bag again and just reassess some pieces that might not be necessary to try and cut the weight down. So it's usually 28 pounds for like a week long trip and 22 ish, maybe a little over for three day trips. That being said, next time we're going to be actually out on the hike. You guys will be watching the highlight reel from the comfort of your own home. I hope you've enjoyed this 
series on how I plan my hikes thus far. Like I said in the beginning, this is definitely not the only way or best way. Everyone has their own process and method for how they plan their backpacking trips. Just wanted to give you a little bit of insight into how I plan mine. So as always, thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you again next time when we'll actually be on the trail. Trace in my footsteps to